Buffalo police on Section scene. Buffalo with police tape. Extensive and oppressive heat. More details about what. All right, we're taking a live look here. This is Salem Field, and as you can see, the seats are empty, and unfortunately, it's going to stay that way all afternoon. The team's afternoon game, the Bisons, that is, against the Pawtucket Red Sox, canceled due to the cold temperatures. The teams are going to make up the game with a single admission doubleheader Monday, April 29th. They're going to play two seven inning games starting at 5 o'clock, and fans who had tickets for today's game can actually exchange them. For comparable ticket to any future 2019 Bisons game, excluding July 3rd, those tickets exchanges can be made at the box office. Looking further ahead, the Buffalo Bills have scheduled their preseason play. They're going to play the Colts, Panthers, Lions, and Vikings. Two of the dates are still up in the air, but we do know they're going to play in Detroit on August 23rd, and Minnesota will be at the cap on the 29th. The NFL draft is a little more than two weeks away. We're getting ready for it by asking, who do you think the Bills should draft? Join our News 4 sports team as they break down everything you need to know about the upcoming NFL draft. That's tonight at 7.30 on our website, WIVB.com. New at noon, we've tallied your nominations, and we can now reveal your top choices for Buffalo's best food truck. Take a look at your screen right now. The top four, Babs Barbecue, Dirty Bird Chicken and Waffles, Lloyd Taco Truck, and the Niagara Cafe Food Truck. Some stiff competition there. You can cast your vote right now on our website, WIVB.com, or on the News 4 app. Then we'll reveal your top choices live on Wake Up Friday morning. And if you want to sample some of the fare before you cast your vote, head over to Food Truck Tuesday in Larkinville Square. This is the third Food Truck Tuesday of the season. You can sample signature dishes or go with some healthier options at more than 20 different food trucks. Food Truck Tuesday is tonight from 4.30 to 8 p.m. Meteorologist Mike Syke tracking the forecast, and Mike, it's going to be a great evening to head there and yeah, uh, try sure some is. of the food yeah. trucks. Yeah, you, you know the sun comes out and Mel is rocking and rolling over here. You should have <laughs> seen her with that music playing a couple minutes it ago. It just gives me energy. I, I know, know I'm not alone, Mike. You know, it perks us up definitely, <laughs> and the sunshine will perk. Cat lovers in Seattle had a perfect end to their work week. On Friday, City Hall became Kitty Hall during the city's fifth annual adoption drive. The Seattle Animal Shelter set up tents so people could meet, play, and cuddle the cats, maybe even take one home. There was also a Kitty Council, which had adult adoptable cats vying to be named the Kitty Council president. Andrew, when it comes to a cat lover like me, you mm -hmm. don't have to persuade me to go to Kitty Hall. <laughs> I am not great with cat puns. Um, I got to work on my game, but I think we should have a cat day here. Right meow. See you. <laughs> Later. <laughs> you got me. Looking ahead, this weekend is set to be a scorcher, and we know pools in the city of Buffalo will open soon. All city pools are scheduled to open this Sunday, July 1st. The city has two indoor pools and eight outdoor pools. There's no fee to use the outdoor pools. However, you must sign in and young children must be accompanied by an adult. We have more information about where the pools are located, pool rules, and the hours on our News 4 app and on our website, WIVB.com. And today is a day for a shady celebration. It's National Sunglasses Day. According to the Sunglasses Museum in Los Angeles, yeah, this is a thing, sunglasses were first used in prehistoric times. The earliest models were made of walrus ivory with small slits to block out the harsh Arctic rays. Since then, shades have come a long way. Today, they're just as much a fashion statement as a practical accessory. And Mike, I could only wish we needed the, the sunglasses for today, but we don't because we're dealing with rain out there. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that today, Mel. Though I have to admit, you know, some of these sunglasses today, too, they also help to block out ultraviolet radiation. So another very important aspect there, uh, similar to uh, putting sunblock and sunscreen on your body. Hey, let's uh, take a look at the... Well, many of us, including the person who runs the Buffalo Bills Twitter account, were at a loss for words after yesterday's disastrous outing against the Bears. The team tweeted this expressionless face just 11 minutes into the game. Sunday's 41-9 loss at the cap is the team's fourth straight loss and their seventh loss this season. There was at least one thing, though, to be positive about. Nathan Peterman's fourth quarter touchdown was the first time the Bears allowed a rushing score all season. Sean McCoy struggled on the ground, picking up only 10 yards on 10 carries. 
Peterman also had three interceptions. This brings his season total to seven. The turnover is frustrating anytime it happens. So, um, regardless of how it happens, uh, the end result is a turnover. So, um, it's frustrating. You know, obviously, we know that we can't do that as an offense. Um, we got to be better in that. Um, you know, especially how our defense sets us up. They play so well. Um, we got to be better in that area. This afternoon, head coach Sean McDermott will address the media and share his thoughts on the team standing at the bottom of the AFC East. We'll have the latest on News 4 at 4. And next week, the Bills hit the road to take on the Jets at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. Jay, what is your favorite emoji? My favorite emoji would be the smiley face with the jazz hands. I love to show how excited I am. Quick follow-up, can you floss? <laughs> the Bills are looking for some new faces to cover the 2018 season. They're calling all kids to apply to be their new reporters. If your kid thinks they have what it takes to cover everything from practice to the playoffs, you have until May 18th to send in your resume. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Mike Banks heading to the north. Canadian-born pitcher James Paxton is making history against his home team, hometown team, that is. Last night, the man nicknamed the Big Maple threw the league's third no-hitter of the season. The Seattle Mariners pitcher is the second Canadian to pitch a perfect game and the first to do it in 73 years. The final score, 5-0. to zero. A happy celebration there. Yeah, it's incredible. All right, from across the border to across the pond, the Yankees will head to London next year to take on their longtime rivals, the Boston Red Sox. Major League Baseball scheduling two regular season games inside the city's old Olympic Stadium, which can hold 55,000 spectators. Organizers hope it'll be packed to the brim. These games really matter, so fans should expect the action on the field in London to be intense. The best team win, and may in future years there be many more games in London. Thank you. Again, this is 2019. Major League Baseball hopes it can score big in London, just like the NFL, which brought football overseas more than 10 years ago and is now selling out stadiums. The Bronx Bombers and the team from Beantown <laughs> face off June 29th and 30th again 2019. Yeah, one of the hottest rivalries in baseball.